Hey YouTube, it is Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and today we're going to have to do a little bit of work on our GTP cage. Here's the issue. He keeps breaking all his shit. And uh, so we're going to get him out, set him up, redo his old cage, kind of show you what we've done, show you the products that did not work so well for us, that he just destroyed. Some of them are on convention, some of them are not. And then show you what we're going to do, do it, put him back in a nice, happy, clean GTP cage with new cage furniture. But first, I get to get this cranky son of a bitch out. Let's see how that goes. Now with these guys, because they're angry all the time, I typically don't just reach in and grab them because it's a good way to get bit in the face. So I like to put them on a hook if I can. Especially when I don't have a tree limb I can easily remove like I typically like to do. Come on. Come on. This ain't so bad. Don't touch the light. Come on. Sometimes you gotta outweigh them. That's what we want. There we go. See, simple as that, and there is a green tree, green tree python. Now the trick is, when you're doing that, you don't want to really pull on them. Because pulling on them will do you no good. You could hurt them. So just slight pressure. That way as they move, they can't go back in there and end up on your hook. You can see he is ready to let go at me at any moment in time. Uh, they're amazing. But look how much color he's really gotten. One thing I really wanted to focus on is you can see the underneath belly there. Make sure I'm in the good light there, Kurt. Look at how much blue is popping in through there. Very, very pretty snake. And you can see it ooh, right in there. <laughs> there he goes. So anyway, he is really starting to get his full green. We'll set him down there so you can kind of see him a little bit and the blue color. Now, if he will start trying to run, which after a while they typically do, then usually you can start going hands-on with him and handle them. Hear that hiss? But you gotta let them get over, let them get over being super cranky first. And he is just not ready to be over being super cranky. So, anyway, that is Nemesis. Our green tree python. And see, Kurt's like, oh, I hope you get bit. That'll be great for camera work. Not today! Yet, anyway, trying not to. Let's get Kurt bit. That'd be funny. You want to try this? Huh? Mm -hmm. Want to hold him? But typically, he's just, you know... This is what you expect from these guys. This is a Biok version. There, yeah, look at the camera. See the camera backing up? Yeah, I see how it is. And usually he'll start running. So going to give him a chance to do it. I'd like to go hands-on with him if we can. The problem is when you start doing that, their attitudes, well, they might be good for a second, can tend to change in a heartbeat. There you go. Now as you can see now, while well, he's still fired up, we are more hands-on. He still owns my hook. But you can see there, you can actually handle them a little bit. It's slow, it's gentle, it's methodical in how you do it. And he actually has a pretty good grip on me right now. If I were going to move him, I have to do it in a way that he's comfortable. Because if anything moves really fast in front of his face right now, and it's warm, he is going to light it up. Alright, you ready to go into a tub? Come on, little buddy. Let's do this. I should have opened one of these beforehand, but I didn't. No face bites. Hey, no face bites. No face bites. Whoop, there you go. Now, this is not what we normally keep them in. You can see he's wanting to go up. He is not wanting to go down into that tub. Put the whole hook in there. I may have to, Kurt. There he went at me, but he didn't get me. That's what I'm talking about, though. They are just cranky little monkeys. Not the fastest things in the world. Not as slow as Amazon tree bows. Can I get my hook back? Are you going to keep it all? Huh? I'd like to get it back, so make, fine, keep it. Keep the hook. Whoop! That's temporary while we redo the case. He's going to be in there for maybe, maybe an hour. We'll rebuild everything, and then we'll show you how that works. You got to see him try. He didn't even really get close. A lot of that's just all defensive by them, but 
you did see that we can actually go hands-on with the green tree python without too much drama. It just takes a little work. All right, we'll be right back. Let's do this cage, and we'll show you how it goes. All right, here's some of the crap he broke. We had some of these, which we had some Velcro pieces in there, and, you know, where we had these highs. I had them connected to each other. He actually broke them, so there's nothing there holding them on. So we went to these commercially made deals with the suction cups, you know, and some pressure. We put them in the corners. They were kind of cool looking. They lasted about a week, and he broke those. So, uh, he broke two of them. He's destructive. So, throw that crap down there. <laughs> That's all shit he broke. Now, we're going to reuse the plants to make it look nice. Those are fine. But what we're going to do instead is Kurt is going to, because, again, guys, I'm not a carpenter. I'm lucky if I can build a puzzle, okay? I, I fucked up late. Oh, YouTube. I screwed up Legos when I was a kid. So, I did have some Lincoln Logs. I can make some pretty decent shit out of them, though. So, anyway, uh, Kurt is our master carpenter level here. <laughs> he's smiling. But anyway, he's going to do some building. You can see where he kind of had the Velcro set up there. He tore that crap up and ripped it off. Uh, so he's going to actually build something that's going to go in here, have bars across. Of course, we got the opportunity to snake that. We'll completely clean all this. And this gets really gross looking because we do the water spraying in here to help with the humidity rise and lower. So we'll get that all cleaned up, get the cage looking nice, do a full litter change while he's out, full water dish change the whole nine yards, and then rebuild it, put him back in there, with his new climbing branches. That'll be not falling apart because this guy here isn't building them. The camera guy is. Seems two minutes. Hey guys, it's Matt with Reptile Still, and what seems like it was instantaneous for you took us quite a while. Let's take a tour of the new cage. So, it's actually the same cage, but we've done a lot of work in here. So you can see, he actually has perches now instead of breaking them, which is nice. We put fresh litter in. We've got it all moistened up. Uh, we're about to add him in there. We got our plant cover back in there, all freshly cleaned. Wrap that around a little bit. Fresh water, fresh water dish, clean his water dish. So he should be a happy green tree. Let me get him, get him in there, right? And then we'll uh, talk a little bit more about him. So, there it goes. He's still hanging out in the tub, but not that one. Picked wrong. This is the right one. He gave me back my hook, though. Come on, buddy. How's your attitude? He actually isn't too bad right now. You gonna be nice? Look at that. We're almost being nice. And so we can see him. Now, a couple really quick features on them. We get their face. I love their heat pits on the side of the jaw like that. Very, very awesome. Let me get him back here in the light. Hopefully that blue color is starting to come in really well for you guys to see. The green is awesome. He's been really healthy for us. Or she. I keep saying he, but he's a she. And you can see on this back half there, especially that blue color coming in by the tail. Now these are amazing creatures. I love them. They were one of my dream snakes. They're great for displays. And that's what she's used for right now. We do want to breed them in the future. So we can get her to go back into her new enclosure. She can get a belly shot there. You can see some of the blue and the black coming into that too as well. I don't have a lot it's going to do. But here we go. Here we go. What do you think there, Snakey Snake? And if we're lucky, she'll just crawl off of the hook right onto her perch. Or one of her two perches. Maybe. Now, why have we done what we've done? Well, these guys live pretty much completely in the, in the canopy when they're an adult. So, they never really come to the ground. They, they need to have those perches to feel comfortable. Even when he broke all his perches, he'd be up on top. That's another reason why my cage is up so high. They're used to being up in the air. So even if I'm above him all the time, or her, but she's got perches, she still may not feel as comfortable. By having her up high, she kind of is looking down at everything in the room, feels very nice and secure, gets to be a normal green tree python up in the forest, which is what we want, or in the jungle. Look at that too. See that tail? See that color on there? What they'll do with that is they'll wiggle it in the tree. And birds think that's a worm. That's why it's that different color. So then the bird goes, oh, I can eat that. And it comes to get the little wiggly worm. And instead it gets screwed up by a green tree python. Pretty effective. It's like fishing for birds. So another thing I really like about them, I think caudal luring is just awesome, which is what that's called. So a few other things. Really, really long teeth. This is a must. If you put your green tree python on the ground all the time, it's not going to do well. It's just not. These are not snakes that you can keep uh, in a traditional rack system very efficiently. 
know, if you had babies, you can. You can actually put a baby in one of these six quart tubs and you've got to put some perches in that tub for it still. So like, you know, people put some cross beams and things in there or, you know, run a, like little pieces of, not toothpicks, but same type of consistency, small little pieces of wooden dowels through there so that they have something to perch on. So you have to provide that. Another thing that we kind of found out when we were first researching to get one, so one of the best ways to keep these guys is we put a lot of litter in it. They're really never on the ground. They don't really crawl through it or dirty it, but you know, we do have to clean it because of poop and urine and that sort of thing. The other thing is with them, yeah, you're getting comfortable now, aren't you? They uh, like their humidity to kind of spike up and then come back down. So by providing that, I can keep a lot of water on it. It has a heat pad, which will help to uh, cause that to evaporate and raise that humidity that we also missed. It does have a large bowl for drinking. It will drink from its tree. It will hang down and drink just like when it eats. If you look now, that thing is already settling in. It's something like a green tree ready to kill me. So that's pretty awesome. Great feeder. And now that we've got a better setup for her, it's going to go a little bit better, we think. Uh, honestly, this is my first green tree. So I thought their setup was good until she destroyed it all. And I'm like, well, we got to do something. You may be wondering what this hanging vine is for. That is just something that she can kind of rub against if she wants from her tree to help with shedding. You know, the fake plants are kind of in there to provide some cover, so it's not just an exposed area. She also has some heat that comes on and off up top, which is hooked to the thermostat to provide some supplemental heat. But that is kind of it. Kurt, you have any questions about Nemesis, or green tree female, Bjork? Um, do you know where they are from? They are, I always want to say Australian, but it's not actually Australia that they're from. It's from that same area. And this one is from the Biak region. So they're named not, you know, people will think, oh, you hear R. Russo wrong, Biak, and all these things, that they're different, like, morphs, okay? They're not morphs. What that is is locales. So they've been kind of separated by nature in different localities, and each locality kind of has its own things about it that are just slightly different, even though they're all still the same green tree part. So basically they've line-bred themselves through nature to be a little bit different. So this one's from the Biak region, or what its bloodline is from. It wasn't. It was captive bred. But uh, Bioks, one of the things about them is they tend to be larger. This is the largest of the green tree pythons. So they're going to be bigger than our roos, Sorongs, and there's about four or five other locales you can get into. Uh, they also tend to take the longest to change color. So if you were to go with like a Sorong, you know, they're gonna, they don't come green. They come, this one was yellow. Oh my god, she's all yellow, some red markings, really cool. And they're going to change color as they age. You can see she still has a lot of that yellow, but more and more green has come in. And that's, with Biox, they take the longest to have the allergenic change. So they take forever to actually change colors, which is what I kind of wanted. I wanted to kind of enjoy that change as she continued to change over time and not have it just happen overnight and be done. You know, with a Sorong or Aru, you're probably going to be done in, you know, less than a year I think. These guys take much much longer so pretty cool. Anyway really happy with the build. Oh one other thing you gotta pick your wood. When you go to do a wood build in a cage like this one thing you gotta make sure of is it's not a toxic wood. We use oak. It's not an oily wood. It's not going to be toxic for the snake to be on so you know make sure that you're checking that when you're going to do a wood build. Anything else Kurt? No. Nope. Alright guys thanks for watching. That is our green tree python. You even got to see her in my hand a little bit. She did try to bite me once, but we avoided that. And you look, now, anything that comes in that cage and gets in range, she would certainly go for, including my hand. So if it got close enough, see now that she's comfortable, she ain't having none of that. And she's sitting up there, and she's, this is her natural state, okay? She is ready to defend herself, ready for food to come through, anything, and she can get it, and she can take care of it. So she feels hidden, but she's not going to just wait by. So if I were to go try to grab her, she would make me bleed. So we're just not going to do that. All right. I don't really like getting bit. It's not my favorite thing to do. All right, guys, we will see you soon.